Hello and welcome back to the Joel vs Arthritis YouTube channel um, and in this video we will be talking about biologics and why it's so important for you to stay educated and informed about your medication. Welcome back, um, I'm Joel, if you've not met before I'm an arthritis, sciatic disease, chronic pain and mental health patient leader. Um, I talk about my lived experience to improve patient outcomes and provide platforms for people to share their stories. And here today, we're um, going to be talking about biologics um, medications. Um, so I myself, I have juvenile idiopathic arthritis. It's the sciatic uh, variety. So I get rashes, as you can see on my hands right there, um, as well as pain in my joints. Um, I've been on biologics since my 20s and they literally changed my life like many other people. Um, melted away my rashes and controlled my pain and they are an essential part of me living well with my chronic disease a chronic disease that had me in a wheelchair when i was a kid so um so living proof here that they they work um however i had a recent experience that just reminded me how important it is for us to remember how serious and potentially dangerous these medications can be if you don't take them seriously um, so we've all probably may been made aware, I'm sure you had lots of talks from your clinician when you started a treatment like biologics that, you know, they make you immune suppressed and you probably are well aware of being high risk after the recent um, global COVID-19 pandemic. Um, but you probably forget the intricacies and details um, when you're on these things for years and you just inject and week in, week out and not really giving it a second thought. Um, so I recently had a chest infection. I'm asthmatic, so it does make things a little bit more complicated, but it just kept going. It lasted for weeks and weeks and weeks. As soon as the antibiotics ran out, temperature would return. I would be vomiting because my fever was so high. I was, it was the most unwell I've been in years. Um, and it was thoroughly awful. And a lot of this came because I got unwell. I got a chest infection. I was coughing. It was a productive cough. Um, and I carried on taking my biologics because I've been there. I know how you guys feel. We're so scared that if we delay our treatments, even though we're told to on immunosuppressants, if we get ill, um, you're so scared of the pain returning. You're so scared of the next flare. You don't know what tomorrow brings. And I totally get that. And I was the same. And for the first two weeks of that chest infection, I didn't delay my biologic. Um, and I got worse, a lot worse. Um, and I mean to the point of almost needing to be hospitalized worse. Um, I was violently ill and that all came from a chest infection. I had no idea a chest infection could do that. So I am here to remind you that you need to take your biologic seriously and you need to do, as the advice says, at the first sign of infection, either consult your do doctor and more importantly, delay your treatment. I know we're scared of the pain return. I know we're scared of the next flare. But somebody that spent six weeks out of work ridiculously ill with something as simple as a chest infection, it's not worth it i just want to remind you you should be given a biologics alert card we have these in the uk i'm assuming you um you probably have similar in the us and wherever else you're watching this but there is some one point on here that i want to point out to you to make sure you tell your friends family support network and any medical professionals you interact with because the doctors i saw had totally forgotten about it the important bit on here to remember is guys this therapy can increase the risk of infection obviously and may mask commonly recognized signs and symptoms such as fever and pain. And that last bit is really important because ever since I've been on biologics, my body temperature is lower. So, you know, most people, when they get to 37 and a half or whatever, they start to describe that as a fever. My body temperature regularly runs at 36. Sometimes it'll dip below, but regularly runs at 36. If I get anywhere near 37, I feel utterly horrible. When I had this chest infection, I was running 38, 39 degree temperatures and I was violently, violently ill to the level where more, the more regular people might need to be in their, like in their 40 degrees Celsius temperature to feel like that. So it's really important to remember that biologics can mask a fever. The amount of people I speak to in my everyday sort of advocacy that don't realize this, that, 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 that just, it's just not on their radar. Um, it can lower your body temperature. It can mask a fever. And not enough people know this. People in the medical community forget it. Um, and I was completely ignorant to it um, when I first went on to biologics until I got really unwell and couldn't understand why I was really unwell because my temperature only read 37 and a half. Um, so for me, that bar is lower. Make sure you tell your clinicians. If you go see your primary care, you know, your GP, and they say, oh, your temperature's only 37 and a half. Explain. I'm on biologics. That makes me feel rubbish. Other things to remember on biologics. 
certain blue cheeses and um, things with live bacteria are really dangerous to you if you're on biologics. Um, we've mentioned you can get the infections really easy. You're a lot more susceptible to things like tuberculosis and TB and, and pneumonia. You should be getting your five, here in the UK, every five years we have a pneumonia jab. You should be getting that. Obviously, you should already be getting your yearly flu jab as somebody who's immunosuppressed. If you're not, this is me telling you, have a word, get your annual flu jab. You must have it. Here in the UK, they can stop your prescription to biologics if you don't have your annual flu jab. Um, but get your five yearly pneumonia jab because pneumonia is everywhere. People don't realize it. It's like an opportunistic thing. I'm not medically trained. That's a good point for me to remind you I'm not medically trained. Um, but from experience, it's an opportunistic thing and it needs you to be run down and ill or whatever for it to blow up. Um, so it's everywhere, especially this time of year in the winter. You need to be protecting yourself from that. Things that can be like a runaway train in your body. Because that's how my chest infection was. It was it was a weak chest infection. Then it became a problem. I took antibiotics. The antibiotics ran out. It came back a lot stronger. Then the second lot of antibiotics ran out. And it came back stronger still. So this is what can happen with immunosuppressants. If you don't delay them, you don't take them seriously, and you don't follow the advice. So this is me telling you for your yearly reminder um, to reread your information pack that came with whatever drug it is you're on. I'm on Humira, um, but whichever drug it is you're on, reread this. I'm constantly campaigning. I think that we should have yearly education refreshers. I know not everyone's going to thank me for saying that, and I know resources are tight, but I generally think we should. I think for something as serious as this, getting as unwell as I did in a time when we are living with COVID, I'm not saying I agree with that statement, I'm just saying it's a phrase everybody uses, um, I think it's really important that anybody that's on biologics should be offered a yearly education refresher. For those of you that went on to biologics here in the UK, you might have that experience where a nurse would come to your home, they'd show you how to inject it the first time, they'd educate you, they'd go through your information back. I think something like that should be given a standard, um, particularly here in the UK when the delivery of biologics isn't exactly brilliant at the moment. That's a video for another day. Um, so yeah, that's something I'm, I'm campaigning for. If you think there's somebody I should be speaking to about that, um, no matter what country you're in, and you agree that that should be a thing, you get the opportunity for a yearly refresher um, to ask questions and educate yourself on your um, your biologic, your immune suppressant, then let me know down in the comments. Um, and while we're at it, remember to hit the subscribe button. We're a small niche channel talking about very specific things. It helps us massively. Anyway, I hope this video helped. Um, I hope it answered some questions. I hope it made you give you some food for thought, stuff you thought I didn't realise that, especially the lower body temperature. Check your body temperature. See if it's lower than normal, just as a as a theme, because it is. it doesn't happen in everyone, but it definitely happens in me. Um, but if you don't know these things, you don't know to raise it to your clinicians. So be informed, educate yourself, because informed patients are the future of tomorrow's healthcare. At the minute, it's a one-way relationship between doctor and patient. We're going to change that but we need to be more informed. We need to be more educated so we can ask the right questions to start making that a two-way relationship. Anyway, I hope this helped, guys. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away.